Hey, good morning, Auburn High School families, community. This is Jeff Gardner, principal at Auburn High. It is Monday morning, October 18th, with just a quick snapshot on how things are going here at school. I'm gonna go ahead and move over to presentation mode, just to kind of show you what we're still emphasizing. And here we go. So daily in our lunchroom, um, and this is on top of all the reminders teachers are giving students and just so you know, we are reminding kids every single day and reminding ourselves to, to make sure we're masking up, we're covering our mouth and our nose. We did take a little bit of spike in COVID uh, cases um, amongst students and staff members about a week and a half ago. And uh, we were really keeping kind of the lowest count here among all the larger high schools in the district. And we did see a little bit of spike. Uh, we continually try to focus on one or two things each day. We just want to make sure that kids aren't hearing all of this at once. Um, and we try to think about the things and observe and kind of share notes on what areas we have to get better at. Um, I would say I would give our students like an A minus on masking up. There's still some kids that walk around the building, keeping the mask below their nose. Um, I know for our kids that are wearing eyeglasses, it can be really challenging because they steam up. So if you could work with them to help with that, I know it's gonna keep our hallways even more safe. I feel safe in our hallways now. Um, but there's nothing wrong with even increasing our safety. Um, I can't tell you too much about the classrooms. I'm in the classrooms, not as much as I'd like to be, but you know, three or four times a day, I walk into classes. Sometimes I stay for a length of time. Sometimes I don't, but the kids are doing a great job there. It's just when they get out in the hallways, they get to be a little bit more relaxed and overall they're doing great. Uh, distancing, uh, that's a tough one, uh, cause we're kind of all in one building and I think movement is important, masking and moving. Uh, last week, we had a pretty large lunch on our testing day, so we will not do any more single lunches, but at least the students that were there in the lunchroom, it was pretty packed, it was pretty crowded. We told them to eat quick, start moving around the building, and we just told them, you can walk the halls, whatever you need to do, and they did great with that. Uh, another thing, especially with older students, we can remind them to be aware of their surroundings, and I do notice, uh, just kind of casually observing, watching kids doing a great job with that. Some of our students and some of our adults, I get caught in this sometimes, you start becoming you know, the social people that we are and sometimes it's easy to forget we're still dealing with a pandemic, but you know, if the students can kind of at least talk about it once in a while, somebody in their circle of friends will probably do a quick reminder. But overall, like I said, we're doing pretty well. Um, one thing we probably could do a better job of uh, reminding students as an administration is make sure we're washing our hands. I'm trying to model that more. We do have uh, dispensers all around the building for hand uh, sanitizer. And then many of you probably already know we had a, a problem in our boys' restrooms with soap dispensers being destroyed and vandalized. And hopefully that's kind of done. Uh, hopefully the TikTok challenge has kind of ran its course and we don't have to deal with that anymore. Boys' restrooms are being closed because of vandalism and that's making it really hard on you know the 95, 98, 99% of the kids who are trying to do things right. Um, and then more than anything, we're really just trying to emphasize that our students um, and our staff, we enjoy being back. And, and I think we do, um, based on some of the events we've had around here, whether that's homecoming week, football games, volleyball games, all the other activities we have. Kids are trying to be as normal as they can, yet still follow the guidelines. Okay, next thing I want to tell you a little bit about is the health of our academics. Okay, and this has to do with each student's grade. I'm not breaking it down by students but actually the grades we give. Um, we know that when students are well, when they feel well, uh, they tend to do well academically. So the snapshot, I'm gonna give you three different snapshots. I'm gonna give you a, a snapshot in time from two falls ago. So we've already had two graduating classes since then. We've added two new, but from two years ago, if you look at Auburn High School, late September, early October, 82% of our students were passing their classes at that time, okay? These are just snapshots in time, like I said. Um, what I try to look for as an administrator is we need to be at least 80% at these points. And we know for some of our students that aren't quite hitting standards, we've got all kinds of great ways to help intervene, help give them the help they need. Sometimes they know how to do it themselves. Sometimes it's just time. Sometimes it's just having that quick explanation by a teacher away, to, away from class. Sometimes it's making up a test. Sometimes it's getting that project in that has a lot of weight on it. 
Um, so this is two years ago. This is before most of us even knew what COVID-19 was. So at that time, as you guys can see, we were 82% of our kids were passing. And that was pretty high uh, for our school. Before that, we were in the high 70s. And we had 17% of our students who were not yet passing. And again, this is like early October, two years ago. Historically, what's happened at Auburn High School is our students tend to kind of slip um, academically during a quarter, during the semester. And then they make this kind of mad rush at the end to kind of bring their grades back up. And I'm hoping our students can equalize a little bit more and really kind of work on things before the things get to be big things. So anyway, I'll tell, tell you a little bit more about that at the very end. Last year, at a similar point in time, we were passing 70% of our classes. Okay, and you could see that 39% of our grades were A's, 15 were B's, 10 were C's, 6 were D's. And we had almost, well, we did have 30% of our students not passing their classes at this time last year. Okay, 10% doesn't sound so awful, um, but you think about this, our students had three classes, okay? In a regular year, we have six, so it's a lot less juggling, but we also know all the challenges that were going on with distance learning, the fact that early on last year, not everybody had Wi-Fi service, Anyway, I don't wanna spend a lot of time on this one. That was, that was last year and everything was incredibly different. Um, but moving forward to this year, um, this looks a little more similar to what two years ago looked like. We had 81% of our students are passing. What I really like about this is we went from the high 40s to the low 50s of our students who are attaining A's right now. B's went up a little bit. Uh, we're just a little bit higher in our not passing rate yet. But here's the really great thing, and we're pounding this at our students. We're telling about this to them every single day. We have Troy time. Now, we've done a lot of lessons in Troy time. We've had a lot of like pumping out school information in Troy time. But now that grades are out, we're going to spend more time with our students who are earning Ds, Es, and Fs. So it's that 25 minutes a day, four days a week is not mess around time. They really need to focus in and work on those few low grades they might have. And maybe they don't have any. Maybe it's about getting a C to become a B. But that's something we really want to make sure our kids are doing a great job at. We also have after-school tutoring. Most of you already know about that. We have two buses that leave our school every day at 445, except for Fridays. We have after-school tutoring in our library. We have anywhere from four to seven teachers available on top of the teachers who are not part of after-school tutoring. And they kind of do things on their own in their own classrooms. So really those are conversations that need to happen between your student and their teacher, but we're letting our kids know every single day what teachers are available in the after school tutoring sessions. And that's in the library, like I said. Um, this year, more than any other year, at the start of the year, when we started this, uh, we have the highest number of kids showing up and we still have a lot of room in there. So really that's another message I wanted to send you. If your student is able to hang out at school until 445 to catch a bus, or they can just walk home after they've you know, gotten the tutoring they need. Sometimes kids don't even need tutoring. They just need a quiet place to study. So the library is definitely a place we can offer that. So anyway, like I said, that's kind of the latest status here at the high school. We want to make sure we're really talking about academics and not just the health related things that go on with COVID. Because for me, grades really are an indicator of overall student health. So I like what I see. I just don't want to see any slippage. I want to see us trending up. I'd like to see those numbers in red bars go way down. I'd like to see them go to zeros eventually, but I need everybody's help with that. So make sure you talk to your students, especially if they have low grades. And for students that have low grades and you're seeing growth in them, make sure you uh, encourage them and give them a lot of, uh, you know, um, congratulations on that, a lot of encouragement and and we'll eventually get through all this and we'll get back to a better normal even later. All right, guys, have a great day. Thanks for listening.